Hi, this is a bonus episode of Gridwalk. Nice to see you. It, it wasn't that long, but we couldn't wait until next Thursday to talk about the fact that Adrian Newey is leaving Red Bull. Allegedly. Maybe? Kind of? Allegedly. Yes. Allegedly. Recording from New York and Los Angeles, your hosts, Nicole Katz and Brianna Klein, are lined up on the grid for this week's Gridwalk. Engines are fired up, ready to broadcast to you every Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and more. Subscribe, like the video, turn on auto downloads, and leave a review to provide us with a fresh set of tires. Today, Gridwalk will take pit stops at... <laughs> so, hi, welcome to this bonus episode of Gridwalk, where we're going to break down our first reaction to Adrian Newey leaving Red Bull, why he might want to leave Red Bull, why we don't think he's leaving Red Bull, but, or why we... <laughs> well, reasons why he could be leaving, leaving Red, Bull. Red Bull. Yes. <laughs> the timeline and next steps if he does leave Red Bull, and then of course... We, we talk about whether or not he's going to Ferrari, Aston Martin, or Mercedes, and why we really desperately, 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 desperately want it to be Ferrari. So we really just kind of panic about that for the rest of this episode. Also, since that news, we also got the huge but expected news of Nico Hulkenberg signing with Sauber, which is stake, which is going to become, which is sometimes kick and also going to become Audi. Yeah, you know, that team, the green team, well, Nico Hulkenberg is going to drive there next year and at least in 2026. So we're going to talk about what this means for the whole driver landscape. Is this the domino that is going to set off more dominoes? And last but not least, there is some really exciting F1 Academy news that we are sneaking into this episode as well. And that is that they now have a new sponsor with, that is American Express. So now every single driver on the F1 Academy grid has a giant title sponsor, whether that's an F1 team or a major consumer company. Uh, so we're gonna talk about everything about that. Which, so if you're hearing this correctly, yes, we're just giving you an extra episode of Gridwalk this week. This isn't some 20 minute bonus episodes. No, 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 you got two episodes of Gridwalk this week served up for you within a couple days. It's oh. like a double album draw. I didn't even put that together. I should have expected you to say that. Yeah. If you haven't listened to our normal non bonus episode this week, I just want to let you know what's waiting for you over there because it all is also very exciting and interesting. So definitely go check out that episode when you're done listening to this episode. We go into the wild to talk about Lando's controversial poll, the fact that the track was on fire at the Chinese GP, and everything that Fernando Alonso did to be the drama queen of the weekend. We also talked about the frustration station that was Lewis Hamilton's Chinese GP. Nicole gave a Taylor Swift related podium. And then of course we talked about the Ferrari drivers fighting. So, so much is over on that episode. Make sure you go check that one out after you finish listening to us panic and spiral and also correctly, decently analyze everything going on with Red Bull and Adrian Newey. With that, take it away voiceover man. It's lights out and away we go on this week's Gridwalk. Interesting, things are afoot in the world of Formula One. And surprise, it happens at Red Bull. Maybe? I mean, no one is saying no, so that's why it's that's why it's not surprising yes. at all. Yeah. I just so F1 really makes a habit of releasing news on Thursdays. And that's the day we dropped Gridwalk. And there was no way we were waiting until next week to talk about the fact that it is now very reputably and heavily reported that Adrian Newey is going to leave Red Bull. Yep. It was one of those like rumored and uh, like uh moments where a rumor is so um, so most likely true that the Sky Sports video was available in my country. So that's <laughs> and the last time that happened Lewis went to Ferrari. So <laughs> This is why every like silly rumor that gets floated around like Twitter and unreputable sites gets believed because we've been hearing rumors and rumblings of Adrian Newing wanting to leave Red Bull for the last three or four months. And I've just been ignoring them, laughing at them. And then of course it's like, oh, well, no, that's actually true. And he's going to. What? Right. Yeah. It's like, so uh, just while you, th I mean, cause we've heard so many rumblings with the recent news going on at Red Bull and, like so much chatter of driver movings and different things like that, that it, you, it, it felt like it could have been really easy to lump like Adrian Newey into just like that nonsense of speculation and things like that. And also just, there's so much that rides on like whatever's in his brain 
and so the kind of everyone thinks that like where he goes like something could follow Magical somewhere so, like yes. magic could happen like will but, it I, look but like I, I, I think he's also just had a partnership with red bull now for so long he's been at that team for if not exactly nearly 20 years yeah so this like is a brain two- child Right, this is two decades of Nui and Red Bull being synonymous. And I do think it's important to point out that like not every car he's made during that era has been as dominant as the cars we're watching. But what is indisputable is that this is one of the most impressive lead engineers that has ever worked in F1 mm-hmm. and probably the most impressive one who is currently still working in F1. And we know that you know there's hundreds of people who participated in making a car. And we I think we all collectively put too much on whoever the figure and head at the top is, who right. is making the final decisions. Like, I guess a perfect example is everyone was very excited about James Allison taking over for this year's car for Mercedes and they're worse. And he is the architect behind the the Mercedes cars that were so dominant. So like, it's, it's a collective team thing. All mm. of that being said, Nui is Nui, and him leaving Red Bull, no matter how much I've read of, you know, coping that's been happening from Red Bull fans, it is going to be a hit. It's going to be a huge difference. I mean, because then just also changes the energy. Yes, to your point of it's hundreds of people and like everyone gives, usually gives like a little bit too much power and credit to like who's ever at the top or the leader or something, but there is a vibe set. And when you have that mentality where right now he is the magic sauce that can come in, like that changes the energy in a room somewhere, at least like when you're in a situation where it is working. Like it's not, it's, you know, it's like right now we're talking about the situation of where he were to come somewhere new and in that type of space. So everyone's hyped like that. Like everyone has a system and right now it's working pretty great for Red Bull. So to have any type of shakeup like that, where that exit, and then like, you're going to get someone to come in new that any new person is going to want to try to do certain things differently just to prove a point because it's also like what they do. And also whoever comes in won't be Adrian Newey. So like things will be different no matter what. Not saying that that person would be qualified or things, but it's gu- guaranteed difference. Something change, change is always still change. There's no guarantee. Like, and I just like thinking of it as like you're pulling a piece out of the Jenga tower. Who knows if this is piece is going to make it collapse? But it's a pretty foundational piece that now everyone else needs to make up for. And apparently, the what Nui does particularly well is that he can look at and evaluate designs and immediately know. Like, what needs to fix to make it perform better? Like, he can give that final, like, he's not sitting there, like, meticulously planning out the car, but he can look at those final drawings, and he's such a genius that he can say, like, okay, if we change this, this will be better. Like, just with his brain. Because that's the other part of Nui that people like to talk about, is that he hasn't caught up to, like, modern modeling technology mm-hmm. yet. So, like, all the modern CFD running and softwares that people are using, he's not doing. He's still using pen and paper. So, you know, because he's nearly 70. I'm just thinking of all of the memes of just him staring at, like, every old Mercedes or old, yes. like, previous Mercedes. And it's like, I ha- I'm i going to make the no side her. parts thing work. Yes. I can, I'm going to, I can fix this. I know yes. exactly what you need. Like, yeah. And we're purposely not talking about him going to another team yet. We'll touch base on that later. But, like, just what this means for Red Bull is it will affect them. We've been talking about him maybe retiring for a while and how that would affect Red Bull because... He's been there for 20 years and he is a genius. Like these are just mm-hmm. like facts. He's facts. so part right. of the structure of how Red Bull does things. And he's a genius visionary in F1. Losing that is going to hurt. This is a big deal for a reason. And you can cope however you want about all the other great technical leadership they have. And they clearly do. But like, it's going to hurt. Mm-hmm. And it will make some type of difference. But I mean... It also kind of seems like maybe I it, we're in this weird place where things look like they're going to be different at Red Bull for like a lot of reasons, or maybe not. And it, that could also be why certain things are shifting. So there could be a million answers to the questions as to why he's leaving. And I think that's one of the things that I'm most besides what his plans would be after, which we'll also touch upon yeah. and possibilities of that. But the reasonings and the looking back onto like why he would choose to leave where he currently is, especially when 
on track and things doing great. So like, why would you want to leave and go somewhere else? Oh, because everything potentially is on fire. The house is on fire the, you know, there's, it's yeah. uh, reports are, you know, everything happening with Christian Horner and like really just is the breaking point here. And that's also what we've been seeing for a couple of months of like the speculation that he's saying too, but it's been a lot of things like that. So it's I'm skeptical. Not ha- not right, right. Like it feels like the easy thing yeah. to throw right now, and it seems like the very clickable headline thing. Like it just seems like what. Well, hold on. First, we have to explain what the you're referencing story. because you haven't actually said it out loud. So the reported headline right now is that Nui wants to leave because Red Bull is backing Christian Horner. And saying it's okay that he's sexually harassing women in the workplace. To me, until I hear that out of Nui's mouth himself, I refuse to give this man credit for doing something on the pure basis of morality. Right. Uh, Now, that doesn't mean he can't be. And I would, like, my appreciation for him would go up in an immeasurable amount if this comes out to that's a big move that would be a big move for that reason um and because i mean like that is what it seems like red bull is doing like that is well yeah red bull still has his job he is they are still backing (laughs) there seemed like no rhyme or reason to say like you know make any changes there at this point so it's, I would uh, hope but, it's uh, a but it doesn't see yeah i 100 percent. i do i mean i hope it's yeah i mean i very much hope that's a factor of like in the decision making of things but it just definitely also seems like the easy go-to right now to be like oh 100 this is why he's leaving but i agree with you until i hear that as part of the statement or whatever his I won't explanation necessarily believe yes that. right 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 and i can no- so see a statement coming out of i want another challenge or he's retiring in general right. like like that that those are also things that i see as like a problem i uh, refuse to give anyone in f1 who is not named lewis hamilton the benefit of the doubt for doing something purely out of virtue that's just mm-hmm. not that i no, we know better than that we've seen I, yes. we've seen statements in the last couple of right. I, like I, I weeks that have that. totally like yeah. shown why we can't do that what i have heard that i do believe is that it seems like Red Bull is a mess right now. And it does seem like there is a ton of infighting in Red Bull right now. And again, I'm sure Nui is a factor in that infighting because we just did all this talking and pontificating about how important he is from in that organization. So if there is a lot of political infighting going on in Red Bull right now, it makes complete sense to me that Nui is a part of that and that him leaving is a sign of how that political infighting is going and that whatever team he is on doesn't seem to be Christian Horner's and therefore he doesn't seem to want to stick around. Mm -hmm. So like whether or not the linchpin is the sexual harassment in the workplace or it's just general, that has caused a further explosion of the infighting in Red Bull that we've heard rumored happening for the last nine plus months at least minimum. I'm sure every F1 team has a ton of infighting all the time, but like to the extreme we're talking about, that feels a lot more likely to me. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think there's also to the point where a decision like this isn't made solely based on one thing. Right. This is a, like when, this is a, oh, here are all these factors. I've decided I don't want to work here anymore. Because of many things. And I would love if we someday find out from him that one of those things is that he doesn't want to work in a workplace that's like that. That would be, again, my appreciation for him would grow immeasurably. I would Mm -hmm. love that to be the case. That Red, I would love that Red Bull decided to back Christian Horner than their genius engineering visionary. Uh, Yeah, that would seem to track. Yeah. (laughs) That would be definitely an interesting chapter of this saga. So talking about what this means, next steps immediately and like gardening leave and like like big engineering figures in F1 right now don't just get to leave and join another team. So what we found out is that he is currently under contract with Red Bull through the end of 2025. And contracts 
just don't really mean anything. You can always negotiate the end of a contract. You can buy out an end of a contract. You can renegotiate a contract. But it means that if Nui is leaving and he is not retiring, let's pretend in this scenario that he is not retiring. Not an option. <laughs> yeah. Either he needs to negotiate a buyout of that Red Bull contract where then there'll be some gardening leave for time sure. determined with that buyout, or he will need to fulfill the end of his Red Bull contract, which goes through the end of next year, the end of 2025. Then likely in that contract, there's already a predetermined amount of gardening leave if he chooses not to sign on. Most people estimate a year, which means that that would put him at the end of 2026, which means the earliest, again, if this is if his contract isn't renegotiated with a buyout, that the earliest he could join another team is the beginning of 2027, which means the earliest car he could have an effect on for another team is the 2028 car, which would be the third car in the upcoming new regulation set. The now, year 2028 makes my brain hurt. Like that's just like a crazy, scary thing to all just really say out loud. And it's so wild to be thinking about the start of a new regulation set that like, and it kind of then within that first year missing like first that two? figure. Yeah. 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 First two. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. but just like interpret like first year of his presence, like to your point of seeing him walking around and like seeing everything on the grid and right. then like the effects not taking place till 2028 is yeah. sounds so fake. <laughs> right. A hundred percent. I agree. So I think for that reason, Nui would not be making this move unless either. Oh, and allegedly his contract for 2025 with Red Bull is like a giant amount of money. Mm-hmm. which means that I think he would not be making this move if he was retiring, because if he was retiring, we wouldn't be hearing about this right now. Right he would now. just be finishing out his contract with his very lucrative bonus that yep. he gets next year. And we would just, at the end of 2025, he'd be like, peace out, not resigning. Goodbye. Now nah, there's negotiations. There's discussions. That's right. why, because people talk. No one, and I, very rare. I mean, it happens in every sport, but particularly F one. Like no one can keep their mouth shut on anything. Yeah. So obviously, discussions are happening behind closed doors about some kind of either buyout negotiations or just that. Like he's like, look, I'm done. I'm leaving. Like I'm out of here for X Y Z reason. And Red Bull. Yeah. So I think the logical next question is like, why would Red Bull? buy him out of his contract or like renegotiate the end of his contract this year, theoretically, um, if that means he's helping another team. Well, the answer to that is always money. It's like if this giant sum that he's owed next year, if Red Bull is unwilling to like renegotiate the end of his contract, they have to pay him that next year. And he, mm-hmm. they basically have to pay him that next year without him doing to any then work. Leave. Right. right. It's not like he's gonna, he's like, he's saying like, hey, I quit. I I'm not going to work for you next year. And if they don't want to negotiate the end of the contract, they have to pay him to not work next year. This allegedly incredibly large amount of money. Now, Red Bull might do it out of spite. Maybe he like they're so worried about him going to another team. And like, somewhere else that they'll just be like, sure, go. No. Yeah, take a sabbatical. Right. Like, <laughs> I think the reality is if Nui wants to leave, they'll figure out a way to end the contract this year. He'll probably be on gardening leave all of next year, which means he'll join the team at the beginning of 2026. And the first car he'll have an effect on will be year two of that regulation set 2027. So it's moving the whole timeline I discussed a year earlier. Right. I also just could see Red Bull wanting to bring somebody in, at least having them in a little, like for before 2026. Right. You don't want to be having all of that change right at the start of brand new regulations and that kind of thing. You want to be able to get that a little bit more stable and maybe kind of do a little bit of a refresh. And I think they could use some, positive spin on a press especially if adrian is leaving because that is going to put a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths because you know and not that the cost cap matters to red bull but let's pretend like it did for a second uh if you uh the salary you pay your engineers is part of the cost cap and you are allowed to exclude your three largest salaried engineers from the cost cap which means one of Red Bull's exclusion slots is currently being taken up by Nui. So just from a pure basis of 
oh, we could hire more engineers. We could hire better engineers. We could give a raise to some of our existing engineers so they don't leave and go join another go team. Go somewhere else, yeah. That money is no longer just like, yeah, Nui, sit there and we're going to pay you. It's, crap, mm -hmm. that's money we could be paying to other engineers. Mm -hmm. so, Avoiding the turnover, especially if he is leaving and then people are going to be like, yo, I got to go. Right. So I believe... So one, I do believe that he wants to leave, despite the fact that Red Bull said that they hadn't gotten, the wording was so great. It was like they hadn't gotten official like notice yet or something like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Helmet Marco had no comment. So I'm like, oh, that's real. Uh, <laughs> Voldemort. <laughs> Voldemort the loves to give us so many thoughts. words, has yes. absolutely no thoughts to share. Yeah. There's definitely something yeah. going down. Right. Um, so that. That's just like the immediate, like what we're kind of looking at here, which leads us to kind of establish that I don't think he's retiring because we just wouldn't have heard about this. Um, where will he go? And uh, there's so many fun options and I don't, we can definitely start with the most fun one. I was like, we have to start with but, the most fun one. Right. But I'm just going to like lay out the three teams that are the most predicted right now. It's okay, predicted. Okay, you can do that. And I'm, I'm just yeah, going to yeah. be over here in the land where we want him yeah, to yeah, go. Yeah, but, okay. yeah, yeah. So hold on. I'm going to end with that. <laughs> well, I'm just going to, so everyone gets a lay of the land. Um, we know that Ask Martin has already chucked a huge sum of money at him. That's well reported. Uh, Mercedes probably will if they haven't already. Um, um, and then there's Ferrari. <laughs> Considering <laughs> Nui did say, he has said that it's been a big dream of his to maybe engineer for Ferrari and Lewis Hamilton. And it's almost like those two things are together next year. I feel so much power in this idea that it's like <laughs> probably horrible for my ego. Like, again, so many other factors are involved in making a team good, but that's not something that you could ever tell me. Like, if uh, it would a, be so fun on a bingo card, it would be so fun. You know what, what it feels like? It feels like an NBA, like, super team. It would feel like when, like, the big three came together in Miami, and, like, who knows if it will actually work out, but just the prospect of being able right. to talk about it and watch it happen as a yep. viewer of the reality TV that is Formula One. Yes, please. I yeah, want it feels like the one drama. Of those like an F1 manager style game of like, I'm going to yes. build my team and I want it to be Ferrari with Ra Lewis Look. Hamilton and Adrian, Adrian Newey. Newey. And, and like, throw it's in a like, Charles and Leclerc. And like, just because it's like, this is the dream team. And like, you know what? Fred's been doing great. We'll like keep this dude around. And like, <laughs> it is so written of like, these are all things that I would just love to see go down and happen. Like, let's throw all this together at Monaco and like, see what goes down. Like I... <laughs> It feels like such a crazy type of hypothetical, but like such a perfect storm of things. And like, again, it's that traveling circus. Um, yeah. Whoa, that would cause a really big energy shift. And I think all of Tafosi would cause a global earthquake. I think we would cause a global earthquake. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> the spread across the ocean and the, the country. Contest. As soon as we see the graphic, the F1 graphic of Nui to Ferrari would only, like, only be second to Lewis Hamilton to Ferrari. Like, I don't, yep. of all the people in the F1 space, I think this would be the only thing that would come close to the Lewis news. Yeah, I because it, it's funny. And also just because of the Lewis news makes it like that yeah. much. Like yeah. that's that what adds. It would be crazy him going to Ferrari anyway, but like that, the Lewis piece is like, oh, collecting yeah. infinity stones. Fred Bassler is <laughs> just standing there like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I am inevitable. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah. So I do think the thing that supports that is that he has said that it was a dream of his to work for Ferrari. And he also said that he had a dream to work with Lewis as a world champion. So we can be hopeful there. I think the, if we want to throw some cold water on that real fast, 
Yeah, I'm sorry. fine. Now we can be a little bit more yeah. like, no, 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 no. I just needed to get it out of my system. Oh, no, me too. Been I've been dying. Really talk- well, obviously you did <laughs> yeah. too, but I just, before I could logically like even start having a conversation about anywhere else, I just needed to be like, hee, hee, hee. No, it was my first, <laughs> my immediate reaction is I saw the news. I saw that the news was reported by like the BBC. And then my brain went, Ferrari? Is he going to Ferrari? Is he going to Ferrari? Ferrari? Is he going Ferrari, to Ferrari? Ferrari? Is he going to team up with Lewis at Ferrari? Is it going to be Ferrari? <laughs> <laughs> that was... Um, a, a lot of people have been rightfully saying that he's never worked outside of the UK. And he is from and lives in the UK. And he might not want to move to Italy. And I do think, while people are often very quick to be like, but it's Ferrari. I do think having to move to a different country... It's a fair st- all of these are still people. Like, yeah, they all yeah. they have homes and lives, and like it's you know not just like Sims you could plop somewhere we're, else. Like, yeah, moving. We're yeah, not UK actually to playing Italy is, F1 manager. Is, exactly. It's <laughs> definitely it's a very different experience than just like kind of like flip your life a little bit of it upside down. Right. So that is, I think, a very fair point, and also money. Like there, yes, of course. Both of those teams would also throw like a ton of money. Not that Ferrari wouldn't. You know, sure he's going to be will. fine and dandy no matter where he goes, getting a lot of money. <laughs> yes. I, I'm i sure that I would be stunned if Ferrari does not match whatever he's being offered at the next team I want to talk about, which is Aston Martin. Because Aston Martin is actually the only team that we have real reporting that he actually was offered a giant contract to go drive for. Aston Martin is, has not been shy to throw money at things lately. They've built this brand new factory and are becoming the Honda Works team, which is still the best power unit right now. We don't know what kind of power unit they're making for 2026, but as of right now, they have the best one. So I wouldn't be, if we saw the graphic pop up on F1 that's like breaking news, new Eden Aston Martin, I wouldn't be shocked. I'd be sad. No, I mean, I, w- <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked at kind of any of like the three. Yeah. Like it, they all... Something tracks everywhere. I think they all present a very interesting, difficult type challenge. Um, and like all very reputable, like big names that I think, you know, you would be great to be associated with here. Um, I think there's also like, there's been so much discussion about, uh, you know, speculation of Lawrence Stroll maintaining majority or like whatever. And it's like selling off different types of shares with that. So I'm, that's also a really interesting thing to see if like the, anything else happens with there and maybe they're getting, we had a whole big conversation last season about like the unbelievable sudden cash flow into Alpine. And if we're kind of seeing some sort of, you know, and that's not going too great, but let's, when you start seeing a team selling off kind of like assets like that and getting such an interesting cash flow, like something's cooking, something's afoot. Yeah. And so if those do come into fruition for any sort of way, I mean, there will continue to probably be like shakeups at Aston for sure, at least while they're still like figuring things out. I think the interesting thing about Aston Martin is I think by the time Nui would get there, Alonzo would theoretically be retired. Mm. Mm-hmm. And while Aston Martin can say whatever they want about Lance Stroll, it's Lance Stroll. And I just keep assuming that Yuki is going to get that second seat because Honda. Honda. And maybe I shouldn't be assuming that. I don't know. But like, Nui's smart. And he's only ever engineered for teams that have had generational talents in the cars. So I couldn't see, I could see him looking at Aston and saying that this has the facilities and the works team component and you're paying me a boatload of money and I can stay in the UK. But I'm sure he's going to want to know who else they're putting in that car. Mm-hmm. And I, I personally right now don't know what Aston Martin's plan is after Alonso. I don't know if they have one. Because they don't have a driver development thing like the other big teams do. And it's, uh, it's interesting. There's not that like line to track. Right. Like um, with Mercedes, we could, even if Lewis was still going to be in the car, we, could, we would all be right now like the next plan is Kimmy. Right. So it's just a little... Can I make, like, a really, like, gross imaginative theory sure. of this? Yeah. Of if there was a Max move to Mercedes and an Adrian move to Mercedes? and Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I was about to like... get... I was talking about Aston Martin. <laughs> I just can't see the Aston Martin because I don't know... I don't think Adrian Newey wants to design a car for Lance Stroll to crash. And that's as someone who actually likes right. to root for Lance Stroll. Right. Yes. Yeah, right. That's the, my brain was tracking to like the, where generational talents yeah. 
could potentially be in okay, things, yeah. and Aston so Martin we... will be without one. Yes. And yeah, 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 yeah. Looking at how Mercedes technically, and we were talking about this last week, two weeks ago, everything's a blur, of that they will no longer have that, and it's not George Russell, and there's this seat there and this space there, and then it could be Kimmy, you, you know, but mm-hmm. there's the potential next domino to fall of the other conversations of Max is speaking to people, blah, 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 blah. So I've been That's pretty a different dismissive. type of villain era of oh that gosh, could Mercedes. start for both yeah. of us if that were to happen. <laughs> Chuck on my yeah. Mercedes We're gear. Really not great at that. Yeah. Um I I've been very dismissive of the Max talking to Mercedes, not because I don't think Max's team is not talking to Mercedes. I do think Max's team is talking to everyone right now because I've been a big believer that there's been a lot of infighting inside Red Bull. I just always thought it was leverage for a big new Red Bull contract. Newly leaving makes me take it a little more seriously. And when very not reputable people are reporting that next week in Miami, Max and his team are having a sit-down meeting with Mercedes, I'm not immediately dismissing it anymore. Yeah, it's not like a, okay, no, this is fully not off, you know, fully uh, something we can maybe consider happening. Anything's possible. Oh my God, if anything is possible. At Mercedes just feels wrong. Yeah, but Ferrari... Oh no no no! For Vol- the right reasons. No, oh, Voldemort. Meaning, thinking, not Nui. Well, that's well, that's well. Hold on. Well, now we're all confusing what our names are because don't we? That that would Voldemort require is Marco. Marco going. Yeah. Right. Well, oh well, uh, Max. His his contract at Red Bull <laughs> is if if Marco, which is Voldemort, right? If Voldemort we'll ever leaves bye-bye. Red Bull. Max has an out in his contract because Max loves Marco. Right. So well, what would how I that assumed- have anything to do with Helmet Marco at Mercedes? Because I just that assumed would just be where it would go. that if Max went to Mercedes, that he would want Marco to come with him. I just thought, I just envisioned there is no world where Max is without Voldemort. I can't. That makes me, that gives me the, gives me the ick. I'm mm-hmm. getting itchy. I can't. Mm-hmm. See, my brain was like, wait a second. How did we suddenly start talking about Voldemort all of a sudden? Yeah, like, yeah. No, we weren't even connect- tracking him here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I just... Wherever, if Max leaves Red Bull, I just wholeheartedly believe that Voldemort's going with him because that's just for some him. reason they're just like reportedly tied together. And I also wow. think there's enough reporting that part of the infighting is that Horner and Voldemort are on separate sides. So if Max is leaving, I'm just not envisioning a world where like where Marco's staying with them. Where Marco's or staying. If Marco's leaving, then like, you know, if Max is on that well, side of the quote unquote infighting, then it makes sense. And all of this is like the help right, right. Yeah, this is all reckless speculation. <laughs> I feel like need to speculation. Yeah. Speculation. Girls are fighting. Da, da, da. By the way, which is why I wholeheartedly cannot get behind until I hear from someone that any of this has to do with the virtuous belief belief that we shouldn't sexually harass women in the workplace. I would love it for it to be so, but there's a reason we call him Voldemort. Like, there's no way that Voldemort is making a morality stand. <laughs> no, no, there's an opportunity. He's seeing there's a lucrative opportunity here that he's seeing, and I very much do not think it's him being any sort of female righteous warrior at all. Def, def not, because if so, the other things could have happened already. He's <laughs> like... Right. Yeah. So I think I think we're watching a power struggle happen. And I would love it if Nui came out and said something positive about how he didn't want to work in that kind of environment anymore. I think that would be great. I just am not holding my breath. I agree. Not holding my breath at that at all. But you know what I am holding my breath for? Ferrari. Him. Ferrari. Ferrari. So I want to go to Ferrari. Ferrari. Like- <laughs> Super out of left field. Andretti gets added to the grid. Nui to Andretti. Oh, I'd love that. Also be crazy fun story to watch. That's oh, a and movie Max, movie. instead of leaving to go to Mercedes, leaves and signs with Andretti. <laughs> this is what the Brad Pitt movie is really about. You know what? I, I lied. The most shocking thing, like I said that Nui to Ferrari would be second to the Lewis Hamilton. Max to Ferrari. And all of a sudden, we have a Lewis-Max pairing. That would... No, I'm just... 
I will shave my head if that were to somehow ever happen. Okay, so you don't put that out in the universe because I'm not cutting that from the episode when I edit this later. <laughs> and now, if for some reason Lewis and Max are teammates at some point, you're gonna have to shave your head, and like you don't want to put that. You should take it back. <laughs> I don't. Because this you sport know, is weird. So- I feel so firmly about it, but you're right. You're and the internet doesn't forget. So no. I take it back now. And I don't forget. I know. So you'll just be like, hey, remember? And they'll be like, no, I don't. Look, I Lewis don't. Hamilton is going to Ferrari. Like <laughs> we this sport doesn't follow rules. Yeah. Nope. 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 That I thought was a total fever dream over the summer, and here we are. This is reality. <laughs> This this newy news really feels like fever dream part two. It does. It really, really does. Until he then goes to Ferrari and then it's part three. Gosh, now Fortnite's stuck in my head. Sorry. No, don't. That's... <laughs> I don't think you're actually sorry. Nope. Regulation reset is coming. Wow, what a ride. This she says nuts. in reference to Nico Hulkenberg's Oh, I didn't even realize career. you clicked record. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Genuine wow. reaction. So, what a shocker. Nico Hulkenberg to stake. Audi. <laughs> Audi, yeah. yeah. But, like, this is speculated. This was s- yeah. surprise to no one. You know what surprised me time, about this announcement? Timing of said surprise? Yeah. They yeah. Were like, oh, now that we're out of China, right, we're going to we'll tell you. Yeah. Going to tell you this. Yeah. I think we were just talking about this a couple Gridwalk episodes ago, and I'll link it above if so. But Audi wanted a German driver. Nico Hülkenberg's been very impressive in the Haas. This felt like the expected. German driver move. So he signed a multi-year deal starting next year with Stake, which will become Audi. Audi. So he's multi-year deal, which means that he'll at least do the first year where they're year. fully Audi mm-hmm. in the regulations. It's expected. It's also interesting. It makes me more intrigued about who that second seat is going to be. Right. If they're going to either have it be BB, if this will be the Carlos seat. If I, it, it's very interesting of now it, there seemed to be like a lot of factors that we were saying, silly season. It will be interesting to see where like this falls and this falls. And then, so the Alonzo thing happened where he resigns with Aston Martin. And we're like, okay, that's boring. And that's just going to like stay put. That's not going to cause any sort of chaos. The Nico signing at stake, I think, is about to be the domino to fall that really caused everything else to now get really interesting because it presents the question of that other seat. It'll be Carlos, who's now not going to be on a seat somewhere. Is it going to put, you know, reshuffling of VB back to anywhere? Who knows? I don't know. Not back I think to anywhere. This... I don't think we're going back anywhere. No. Well,. Yeah, I don't think he's going back to Mercedes, right. and I don't think he's... He, I mean, he could end up in that second Williams seat, but I'd be shocked. No, um, I saw a tweet today that said that VB to OnlyFans, and I just started to <laughs> <laughs> It's like what? he's already halfway there with the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. that Yeah, yeah. No, I... I think a VB to Haas makes a lot of sense, because it doesn't seem like they're eager to re-sign K-Mag. So, like, a Ollie Behrman, VB, Haas VB. lineup could be mm-hmm. interesting. Have and he's been driving the Ferrari. vet and uh, mm-hmm. then your newbie in there. and You're up and coming, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the validity of the Max Verstappen is considering leaving Red Bull is going to determine whether this is the domino effect. Yeah, because I think then if, it could be like slight domino and then it's going to be like a wrecking ball coming in and just knocking everything right. down. If that is true, then I think everyone's waiting to see if that if that Red Bull seat opens up, if Max is actually considering leaving. If that is all Internet speculation, not actually happening at all, then I do think this is the domino. And I find it interesting that it is heavily rumored that Audi's really pressuring Carlos to make a decision. But I... All the Max stuff is real. I understand why Carlos is waiting. And- right. <laughs> so it's because if those are your two options, at least for 2025, you would prefer to not be at stake. Right. 
Yeah, I find it incredibly fascinating. I, I will continue to find it very fascinating how this driver market is squeezing Carlos. Like you would think that we've discussed enough about how like he is a good enough driver that he theoretically should be able to pick wherever he wants to drive, but everyone's just like, yeah, sure, I guess. I mean, we can understand. Yeah, maybe. I mean, honestly, that. yeah, it, it's something that I understand, but at the same time cannot understand, but it's only just the way of the workings of the sport that make it kind of make sense. It's that, you know, not generational talent piece. It's that still being a good driver, but he, he should have a spot. He should be somewhere, but it's just crazy that it doesn't seem like, you know, someone isn't like us, us, me, please us, except maybe steak. I think, I don't know. Yeah. It, it seems like Audi. Really Audi, wants him. Right. So I'm just going to miss saying steak so much that I'm just yeah, no, really keep trying to steak. get all of it out of there. Yeah. and yawn. Love you lots. Yeah. I just use them interchangeably. Uh, the particularly when we're talking about the future i would be though incredibly underwhelmed if audi's 2026 driver lineup like throwing out next year but 2026 lineup is nico hulkenberg carlos Sainz. that's so underwhelming in my yep. opinion. it feels predictable it feels like uh, yeah Two not like ooh. good drivers yeah I, yeah i I don't know. I, I guess yeah. it's, it just doesn't necessarily. I'm, and I feel like I should be more like, yeah, that could be cool. But I'm just like, okay. Yeah. yeah I, don't I think there's so many, there's such much more interesting potential elsewhere of like things that could be, you know, disruptors that I just don't think that's going to be it. They're both just in my second tier of drivers, like mm -hmm. serviceable, good drivers. I have found it incredibly fascinating how Nico Hulkenberg has been able to reinvent his career, though. That's oh, incredible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, much so that if you put him in this car against Carlos, I actually would, I have to sit there and pause and think about who I think would outperform the other. Because that's how impressive Nico Hulkenberg has been in the Haas. <laughs> I won't tell Carlos you said so. <laughs> what? I said I won't tell Carlos you said so. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I have this like nature in me where I can tell that everyone in the world is too high on Carlos right now. So everyone needs to take a deep breath. So it's yeah. like, even though I think he's a really good driver, it's hard for me to like, communicate that on this podcast to an F1 audience that I know is like, he's the, one of the greatest drivers on the grid. And I'm like, no, no, no. We're no, talking we're about tier getting, new drivers. Yeah. And like, we're also just getting like the influence of the power of seeing any other human being win a race that's not in a Red Bull race suit for right. like, you know, that leaves a very lasting impression on an individual's brain. <laughs> speaking so I want to be very individual. clear. I think Carlos is a good driver, but I think he is a good driver. <laughs> like that's, mm -hmm. I just. It'll be I, I two good drivers just, that sound super yeah. mid, sounds great. Can't wait yeah, to see them just... mid out in the mid <laughs> and it all just be kind of mid. Yeah. So, yay for Nico, I guess. Yay for, yeah, no, I'm happy for Nico. I think it's, I was not excited when he rejoined the grid and he's since proved me wrong. He's been very entertaining competing for points and dragging cars into qualifying places. That should be. not be yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah. So I think. Could be I think, to see if he can do the same thing next year and then, you know, whatever happens then with Audi. But I think, you know, filet mignon could really use that additional pull right now. I would be interested you know what it is what's making me not excited about nico hulkenberg is the potential potential pairing with carlos Sainz. Mm. i think if nico hulkenberg is your second driver i think you have an incredible pair but if he's your like 1b driver i think it's a little bad so Who like would I, you I th think would be an ideal now that we know it's like nico done deal in mm -hmm. Who would you, I mean, if it, unless about? it changes. Yeah. I mean, and, and let's like, if that changes your answer base, because let's say it's going to be multi-year because no one's going to sign for one. So it's whether, you know, starting for stake next year into Audi, who would you prefer to see him with like new talent or, or currently someone on the grid? No one currently on the grid would be exciting to me unless they somehow mm -hmm. were able to poach Lando. Huh? <laughs> yeah. That'd be crazy, but yeah. I don't like. I think there's, I think there's a tier of drivers that I put 
Lewis, Max, Fernando Alonso, and Charles Leclerc. Then I think I put Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris below that because Oscar, we don't know yet. I think mm-hmm. he could be a generational driver like he was pitched to be, but we don't know. And I think Lando was just like right below it. Then I think underneath that, you have like your George Russells, your Carlos Sainz, your Nico Hulkenberg, maybe Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly on a good weekend, <laughs> like in that next tier. So it's like, right. to me, pairing Nico Hulkenberg with someone I put in his same tier is not it's ex- good. super exciting. It's just yeah. good. It's yeah. fine. We'll I'm, get some yeah. points. It'll be okay. It's going to be a high floor, low ceiling pairing. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Just cool. not disruptive. Yeah. Good for Nico. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. Really not as like an extreme reaction as like, hey, you might be going to Ferrari. Adrian, you might be going to Ferrari. <laughs> well, yeah. He's okay, this big um, actual kinda, real news. Knew, meh, 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 yeah, meh, yeah, we kind of knew this could have, this was likely to happen. So. Yeah, instead, we spent the entire time talking about like, if the max thing is real, what that all means. Right. <laughs> True. Because it's a we domino already been talking or maybe about? a bigger domino. <laughs> F1 Academy officially has every single driver on the grid has a title sponsor, whether it's an F1 team or a brand. And that's because they announced that American Express is going to be sponsoring both the series and is going to be Jessica Edgar's livery. Whoop, whoop. My favorite and part of this is they're highlighting a small business in every location. I love that idea. It's, it, I mean, we were first talking about like American Express and potentials in motorsports like a couple of weeks ago and, mm-hmm. you know, the possibilities of activations and things like that. And I think it's an awesome choice to be kick supporting small businesses in general because it's like such i mean, for americans to be doing that is like makes a big statement but also for them to be kicking it off in miami and doing it with a female-owned cuban restaurant like love love it perfect the branding on fire it's caja caliente is their first small business that they're supporting and it aligns really well and you know coming out as a major title sponsor with f1 academy and a female feeder series with you know your own female driver and your first small business being a female owned and led and operated business like tracks real well so shout out to the american express like marketing team on like really creating this full story here that really tracks and i hope that that's something that you know, continues to be the types of businesses they support, whether it's women or, you know, POC or anything kind of like that. Like it's really lines well. And not only Amex, like, I'm so happy that Amex was willing to participate and sponsor and back a female feeder series like this and female drivers, but the F1 Academy marketing team and sponsorship team, it continues to impress me with the types of things they're bringing to people. I read this and I went, oh, This was pitched to Amex this way, that they could, like this, like because they have enough of a track record now that I can fully see the thread between what they're doing with Charlotte Tilbury and what they're doing with Puma down to what is going on with Amex here. This is a clear, like whoever they have in that team in F1 Academy that's working under Susie Wolf with the full thing they have going, like they clearly understand how to pitch to brands in a way yeah. that I don't think is always understood. Like it's, there are so many brands that probably would be willing to participate in motorsports or to back female motorsports and female involvement in motorsports if it was just pitched to them the right way. And you can see that they're doing that with how successful all of their activations so far have been. And just the brands that they've been able to partner with, you know, it's not Absolutely. like they're doing it's brands that no one's ever heard of. It's major things that relate and mm-hmm. can either be a consumer product good that we use all the time or like a very legitimate, like athleisure wear that's also tied into F1 or a major credit card company there. It's not, you know, little nothing organizations. They're huge major brands that could very easily be like, now we're just going to either not sponsor or sponsor whatever we want and throw money at it. But it's, you're so spot on that, whatever team within F1 Academy is being so very clear about the campaign, their mission, their values, and that whatever partners come into it need to be aligned specifically with that viewpoint. And that has to be a major 
portion of coming into any sort of partnership with an F1 Academy, which again, I'm just loving seeing that continue to track with the, you know, the on-track mission following with everything off track as well. And Amex already has such great campaigns around sports because they have the whole like card access thing that they do, where you can get early Mm -hmm. access to sporting events and concerts and things. And they run so many campaigns around it that I can't wait till it pops up on our TV screen, like that ad, except now it has like F1 Academy in it. Like I can see it happening in the next year. And I'm just- Yeah, give us, you know, Jessica Edgar going about her day and she's like using her Amex. And then it's like that like day in your life. And at the end, like ends with her signature and it's just like, Mm -hmm. here's the Amex. Like those are some of the best, greatest commercials. And it's going to be really exciting to see that eventually, you know, hopefully grow and involve female motorsports. Okay. The brand alignment is just perfect. It's just perfect. Like, I no And Miami's a great place exciting. to kick it all off. I mean, American yes. Express, like, perfect. Amazing. It's so, yeah. Have you been to, I've never eaten at the Cuban restaurant that's uh, getting the show. I have not, but now I, I want to. So yeah, me too. Working. Right. But I'm just, we need to ask around with the people we still know well, Now I want to see, I got to see where it is now. now yeah. I'm Google mapping real fast Mm -hmm. to see our If you're new to Gridwalk, we both went to school at the University of Miami, both lived in Miami for many years because of that, have eaten at many Cuban restaurants. Caja Caliente in Miami. Shut up. I might have eaten here. Oh, gosh. Now I need to look it up. Where is it? No, Brianna, we lived. This is on Ponce. (laughs) No way. When did they open? This is in Coral Gables. I don't know when this has opened, but this is terrifyingly close to where both of us lived. Um, It's right. It's down. It's on 8th Street. It's near La Careta. So I think this might be new, but maybe it's not. But it's like on that turn when you're going down Lejeune and you make a right at the mobile station. I know exactly what you're talking about. I know you do. And that's exactly where it is. Oh, oh! They have such cute branding. I knew that already when I looked them up earlier. But oh, I'm saying fun. it on the podcast. Wow! Um, so this is crazy close to where we lived, and now I'm getting a little bit emo about this. Um, so no, I don't think I've been there, but we've definitely been near this building, and that's crazy. Okay, so it did open in 2019, which means technically I was still living in Miami, and you definitely were still living in Miami then. But I don't believe I had. I ever went to this restaurant. Um, they I'm trying were, to remember they were if then. I ever like ordered delivery because Cuban food would be always one of those things that I would just throw in and like delivery app and be like, which yeah. one looks good and which one can get me some type of lechon like right now. Oh my gosh, I'm craving. I know now I'm hungry. Yeah. When we're in Miami Eventually. later this year. I hope on your mental plans you have like of course getting Cuban food because it's duh so and hard. a Wawa oh well yeah duh <laughs> like that I, that I just assumed <laughs> okay now we're thing. just planning our future vacation um but- thanks American Express for being a real one shout out F1 Academy which I'm very excited to see next week back again and in Miami. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Gridwalk. Thank you to our co-creators, Nicole Katz and Brianna Klein. Thank you to our four-legged executive producers and me, voiceover man. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, turn on auto downloads, and leave a review to provide us with a fresh set of tires for the next week's show. You can follow us on social media at Gridwalk Show for daily content. We will be back to walk the Formula One grid every Thursday, and we will see you for the post-Gridwalk debrief in the comments. Today felt like a speculated fever dream and not a Gridwalk. <laughs>